There are many people who claim to have experienced strange time experiences or dislocations. And the following story appears to be that of a classic time slip that was experienced by two reputable witnesses in the late 1960s. On January the 4th, 1969, Dr. White and his wife were driving across the Isle of Wight in the UK towards the village of Neaton, which sits at the south end of the island. The couple were on their way to dine with friends at Neaton and decided to take the more leisurely road across the downs of the island. Although there was a full moon, it was not a clear night as there were also dark, heavy clouds in the sky. They began to ascend the first hill towards the downs and observed chalk pits to their left and open fields to their right. As they looked around, they realised that they were in an extremely remote part of the island and were miles away from any buildings and the nearest farmhouse would have been many miles away. All of a sudden they came upon what appeared to be bobbing lights, which looked like a lot of people moving about. The only explanation they could offer was that the lights could only be attributed to shepherds working in the fields with their sheep, as it was the time of year for lambing. The only other reason for the massive lights was that there was an agricultural exhibition. However, holding such an event in early January did seem rather odd. As they reached the top of a hill, they had a better view of the lights, which appeared to cover the field to their right, which to them looked like a great city. It was at this point that Dr. White had stopped driving, and both he and his wife gazed in amazement at the myriad of twinkling lights and were still unsure of what they were looking at. At this stage, the thought that the mass of lights could have anything to do with the paranormal had not entered their mind, and that there would have been a rational explanation for what they were seeing. What started out as a simple journey to visit friends was now turning into a baffling mystery. Suddenly, they came upon what they believed was a simple cart track to an outlying farm. But all at once came upon what looked to be a well-lit city street with assorted buildings on either side lit up in colours of red, green and orange. The couple were now feeling totally disoriented and the reality was further challenged when they reached the farm track only to discover that it was deserted with no buildings whatsoever and covered in shadows and moonlight. The buildings had somehow vanished. Now in a state of shock, Dr. White and his wife had started what they believed was a simple journey under cloudy skies and the full moon, but were now feeling unsure and uncertain about everything, where Mrs. White was hoping to come upon a familiar landmark in order to get back to some sort of normality. They eventually came upon an inn bathed in light called the Hare and Hounds. The inn was a friendly dwelling at the crossroads at the centre of the island to Newport on one hand and Merstone on the other. But their feelings of safety and security were short-lived because as they turned the corner towards a lighted inn, in front of their car were figures running backwards and forwards across the road carrying torches. As they looked out of the side windows, they could see the fields were covered in lights as far as the eye could see. Amongst the flurry of lights was an extremely tall man with clear-cut features and he seemed to stand out from the crowd. The tall man was wearing what looked like a sleeveless outer garment that appeared to be made of leather and a broad belt. The doctor felt that he could not just sit in the car amid the chaos and in order to ease their tension and nervous curiosity, went in search of answers and decided he would get out of the car and ask someone what the reason was for all the frenzied activity. Again, it had not dawned on the couple that what they were seeing could have been illusory. However, as the car was about 20 yards away from the Hare and Hounds Inn, all of the lights and figures suddenly vanished, as if someone had suddenly turned off a light switch and the inn was now in darkness other than the usual lights shining through the windows. The doctor and his wife were so shaken by what they just observed that instead of just getting out of the car to look for answers, they immediately drove to their destination in Neaton without stopping. After the evening out, they bravely decided to return along the same route in the early hours of the morning. But the landscape had returned to normal, and the oppressive heavy feeling that they'd had on the way to their friend's house had lifted, and the sense of unreality had gone. 
As they looked to the sky, the clouds had vanished and a full moon shone brightly. Questions were later asked as to what the couple had experienced, where Mrs White believed that they saw events from a different time, but in the same location. Had they witnessed a Roman legion, as it believed that the Romans had once camped in that area, and torches were certainly used for lighting purposes throughout the empire. That location was also occupied by Vikings, who set up their winter camps in the late 10th century, and used the island as a base before attacking mainland Britain. The tall man appeared to be dressed in clothing that would have fitted a Viking profile rather than a Roman costume, and the Norsemen were a tall race of people. The lights that the couple observed seemed to relate to the past, as the lights seemed to be handheld rather than fixed street lighting. Another theory could have been that instead of being caught up in a time slip from the past, maybe what they saw was a vision of the future. And was it some sort of apocalyptic post-nuclear world? where people were again reduced to carrying handheld torches, along with primitive clothing. Fortunately, Dr. White and his wife never experienced such an ordeal again, but there is no doubt that their sensoriality would have been seriously challenged.